Oftentimes, when we're dealing with information outside of our actual code, we're dealing with human-readable text that we've gotten from a file or are writing to a file or an input or an output stream. But sometimes human-readable text just isn't convenient, and we'd like to use information that's more computer-friendly. Through a process called serialization, we can take some Java objects and convert them to a binary stream that we can transfer across programs. This is not a human-friendly approach. As we'll see in this video, a serialized object looks like complete gibberish to us. But another Java program that knows about that object's class can recreate an object from that serialized information. Not all Java objects, however, can be serialized. In order for us to serialize an object, it needs to be marked as an object that can be serialized. And it needs to only contain members that themselves can be serialized. For some objects, those that depend on external references or those that simply haven't had all of their members marked as serializable, serialization is just not appropriate. The class in front of us, though, is a prime candidate for serialization. Its members are a number of strings and integers, both of which are classes that Java has marked as serializable. But in order for us to transform a car object into a binary representation, we need to let Java know that the car as well is serializable. We're going to need the IO library for this, and then we're going to let Java know that our car object implements serializable. This is telling Java, yes, in fact, all the elements of the car object can be converted to binary representations. We should never tell Java that an object implements serializable unless we've looked at the object and thought it out and determined that this is a safe assumption to make. So we've now marked car as a serializable class, but that is of course the easy part of this video. Our next goal is to make use of this new functionality to create a car object, serialize it, print it out to a file, and then read it back. To do this, we're going to create two new Java classes. One to serialize our object and print it to a file, and another class to deserialize our object and read it from a file. In both of these classes, we're going to create main methods so that we can run our classes as separate Java programs. Let's begin in the Serialize class. The first thing we're going to need is an object for us to serialize. So let's go ahead and instantiate a new car object. Car takes four strings and an integers for its variables. It takes a vehicle identification number, make, model, color, and then a year. So we'll give it a number, a make, a model, a color, and a year. Once we've created our car, it's time to open up a file and serialize that car for output. When we open up a file in Java, we're going to use some different managers depending on if we'd like to write to this file formatted text output or if we're just planning on writing raw binary information. Because serialized objects are binary information, we're going to use a file output stream to write this information. 